now I set up the Single Mums Business Network uh, in 2019. I started my own company in 2013 and um, I did it as a single mum. I've got a dog that's noisy, so excuse me. And um, you right, baby? You can't get in love. And a daughter. Come here. You're no, right. make it. Hey, but I'm actually meeting. So this, well, this is why the Single Mums Business Network works, because the one thing that's really important is that we all get it. You know, we've all got children <laughs> that come in, whether it's bedtime or lunchtime or anything else, um, and roll on March the 8th when we can just have our meetings, you know, the way that we're kind of meant to. So, um, dog and daughter, there we are. That's the reality. <laughs> And cats, yeah, but she's not so, quite so interrupting, darling, is she, guys? Anyway, so, oh, hang on a second, lid's in. So, yeah, I designed the keyboard in 2011. Now, prior to doing this, I had a very, very normal 20-year history of full-time work, and it was very easy. I had a nice paycheck, a nice pension plan, and I really didn't have any idea what it was to have challenges with work around being a primary carer for a child. So um, so that was a really new world to me. And as I just explained to Tam, when I um, asked my employer after maternity leave, if I could then basically return to work um, in a little bit less time because I needed to get back to childcare, they were having none of it. Um, you know, they were very anal about it. And they said, no, you can't leave half an hour early to get back to childcare. Um, so consequently, I found myself walking away from 20 years full time work and, um, and in part time work, which was very low skilled and very low paid. And uh, it was a real parent penalty. And I thought, well, this isn't this isn't good enough. You know, this is not what I'm going to accept long term for my 16 years of caring. And I embarked on a law degree. Um, so that was part of my plan was I thought, OK, if I do a law degree and sort of graduate in law and then at least I know that long term I've got good, strong career prospects and, and I can sort of make sure that my child isn't brought up in adversity because of me being a single parent. And, um, and at the same time, I designed a product called a key bed. Um, it was accidental. I'm a necessity entrepreneur. I only designed it because I wanted it. And then after about six months of really amazing feedback from various therapists and healthcare professionals, I realised I was duty bound to share this with the big wide world. But I thought, okay, how am I going to do that as a single mum in adversity? Um, I was in very low paid, like I said, low skill part time work, um, topped up by benefits, poor credit file, my house had just been repossessed. And um, I really did not have a clue how to start bringing a product to market and giving it out to the big wide world and being a woman in business. Um, and I really felt like an imposter as well. I was so unconfident as a person in business that I asked my sister to be the face of the business because I thought, how can I stand up there? Everybody's going to see it's just me. And um, so I asked my sister to stand up and do a video and say, you know, that she was kind of the, the, the face of key products. She refused and I'm really glad she did refuse because I had to get out of my comfort zone and I had to say, oh, this is me and I've designed a product if anybody wants to buy it, you know. Um, but anyway, fast forward a few years, um, it was really hard. I did not know what help I could get. I didn't know enough about LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook or um, about alternative lending where banks would turn you away for, for adverse finances. I didn't know about networking, about holding up my own as a businesswoman or business person. And, you know, I, I just, it took me a long time to overcome so many obstacles. And of course, at the same time, debt was piling up. And, you know, there was so much trauma and there was uh, the childcare barriers and still trying to get work that would fit in with childcare that wasn't insulting my intelligence or my pay scale. So it was a long, painful journey. Consequently, when it got to the point where I thought, OK, I'm OK now, you know, I'd graduated in law. I was working freelance as a paralegal in school hours. Um, I'd managed to exhibit at the NEC and build my business up to a level I was happy with. And I thought, OK, this is fine. Um, but that was I, I, I nearly lost my life. You know, it was that difficult that I nearly didn't get through. Obviously, I did my daughter. So I set up the Single Mums Business Network in 2019 because I thought, 
There are so many issues here that should not exist. There's so many barriers that shouldn't exist. There are so many challenges that hold you down um, that just shouldn't be there. So for a start, I wanted to um, connect with like-minded people so that we could A, get rid of the stigma and go to government and say, look, you know, um, that we may be in receipt of benefits or we may be in part-time low-skilled work, but you know, that there, you need to sort of stop tying us all with the same brush and people, even me, when I became a single mum, I was, I was already in my mid thirties and I already had preconceived bias um, and stigma about what a single mum looked like. Uh, and I remember when I first went to a gingerbread meter, I was very apprehensive because I thought I was going to be surrounded by work shy, you know, people who didn't have much about them. I, I, I was an absolute twat, you know, really. Um, and, uh, and I, you know, I learned my lessons along the way. So the Single Mums Business Network, I thought, right, well, let's give a positive profile. Let's showcase this strong work ethic. Let's showcase the women who people think are work shy benefit scroungers just after a free house. Da, 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 da. You know, let's really challenge this public perception of what a single mum is. And at the same time, again, my biggest challenge with my business was getting the exposure that I needed to get enough sales for the business to be to be fruitful um, so I thought well let's challenge that as well and let's give these people more exposure to their businesses so that's why I make membership extremely affordable it can't be free because we're not a charity we're not community community interest company again that's a lot to do with psychology one of the stigmas you face as a single parent is that you're that you that you need charity or you want charity and things like that so this is like no we're not asking for charity we're self-sufficient we're paying our own way but that collaborative income is doing something really good it's paying for brochures magazines exhibitions national advertising etc etc but nobody's fighting so low um I'm really sorry for the guys that I'm admitting late. Um, obviously, you're missing some content here, but I do know that Tam is recording in it, it, and I do know that Tam is going to be able to edit you out afterwards. Um, so you will be able to see what you've missed later on. And so, so the Single Mums Business Network does that. And I, I want to explain, particularly because Dickie's in the room, the reason it's Single Mums Business Network it's really not prejudiced against men, uh, men. It's really not intended to be that way. Um, but I'm a red-blooded woman, and I know that the energy changes when there's men and women in the room. You know, we've all got primal needs. And, you know, it's the same reason they have um, all girls schools and all boys schools. You know, you need to focus on business. You need to focus on what you're doing. And, you know, if there's eye candy in the room, that's going to be quite tricky. So we keep it separate. Um, and also there are some women who have had particularly difficult um, backgrounds and they may be they may feel particularly vulnerable with men in the room. So there's another reason for that. It protects them. And also we haven't got a scenario where two parents are going to turn up in the same workshop because we know that, you know, so I'm actually hoping a man is going to set up a male version of the single mums business network, probably <coughs> single dad's business network, not single mums business network. Um, so that we can collaborate and have like an annual ball and things like that, you know, but it's, um, so it's, there really isn't any prejudice there. And I know that a lot of the challenges are very uh, equal to men and women. Um, although normally with men, um, uh, normally with women, they think it's your fault that you're a single mum and they think that you've done it as a lifestyle choice. And normally with men, they're like, oh, poor you, aren't you amazing doing this on your own? Like what happens? So there is a little bit of a uh, different psychology there that we can talk about very honestly and openly in the network. Um, equally, the network serves a very, very strong purpose of having a positive platform in which to sort of speak to each other um, again the first few years of being a single parent I found lots of online single parent groups obviously Frollo didn't exist then and they were very negative and they were very woe is me they were very oh my ex-partner's done this my ex-partner's done that and honestly you feed your brain that junk you're going to walk around carrying that junk you can't do it you need to you need to be focused you need to be positive you need to stop the blame game and in the SMBN there's no blame game there's no negativity yes sometimes there are challenges and we share those challenges as in you know how do I get over this barrier or that barrier but it's done in a very positive way and we're focused on work and we're focused on business and we're not focused on slagging off everybody who could make our lives better or who made our lives worse 
Um, so there serves lots of purpose. So I've just gone on a massive 10 minute tangent then because that's kind of what I do. So what I want to do is just pause for a minute, see if there's any questions just based on what I've said already of that you guys obviously here for a reason. There are things you might want to know. So hit me with it. Um, probably a show of hands rather than the chat because I don't function very well with chat and vision. So if you could do that and talk to me, I would appreciate it. And if nobody talks in the higher you have to do, <laughs> dog scratching on the door. Come in. OK, I can keep talking. That's fine. Um, so what, what guys do you want to know? I mean, obviously, we're talking about setting up business. Tam and I had a little bit of a conversation before I came into the meeting. Um, essentially, you know, normally when you go into business, it's because you've got a strong work ethic. We all know that we can make excuses and we can choose a lifestyle choice. Some people do choose a lifestyle choice of um, withdrawing taxes they probably already paid in most of the time. That's their choice. It's not always their choice. Normally it's lifestyle conditioning and it's a mindset that may come down from the family and it's very difficult to break away from that. Um, but I find that once people get to the point where they want to be in business, it's because they have got a strong work ethic. You know, and Tala, sorry, it's my dog. Um, it's because they've got a strong work ethic. And um, Tara, <laughs> guys, excuse me a minute. Uh, I've just asked. I've just asked my do my daughter to shut the dog up. <laughs> so hopefully we won't get many interruptions. So the, so we've got the full time. So the Single Most Business Network, initially what we're trying to do is we're trying to really raise awareness with the government of these barriers that exist that shouldn't exist. Quite simply, a little bit of flexibility with work and not writing you off when you're a primary carer by sticking you in low skilled and low paid work. You know, lots of us are very intelligent. We've got lots of skills. Um, you know, lots of us have got careers behind us and we basically just need to maintain our skill set maintain our salary scale but probably work in slightly condensed hours um and normally kind of a, a slightly shorter week even 35 hours instead of 37 and a half will often make all the difference but we've got a very closed mindset we've got presence um um you know for from very old school business leaders who were just so adamant that nine to five is the only way to go and you have to take an hour or half an hour for lunch. Um, it's very frustrating because 10 to four in six hours legally, you don't need to take a break and you can fit that inside childcare hours and you can earn the same amount of money. And, you know, we've all learned with lockdown, leaders have learned with lockdown, it's not hard to lock back in for an hour at night and catch up on emails if you do lose a couple of hours in the working day. So, so there are lots of things to tackle with government. You know, we do lots of campaigning, we do lots of letter writing, we do lots of, um, is, you know, we've done lots of interviews with the BBC, with papers, with TV, even both myself and the hire have been on ITV. And, you know, we're really trying to get that message across that they are unwittingly holding us down, you know, fueling the need for benefits to top up at the same time we tackle things like private rental market the house prices and how difficult it is to actually manage on one income because one income with the cost of living now you know as you get forced into adversity that that gap gets smaller and smaller and like i was a homeowner and i don't know if you caught that in the beginning my home was repossessed when i went from full-time work into part-time work so you're kind of forced into this and then the private rent was then more expensive than what my mortgage was in the first place. Um, so, you know, the, the the combination of stuff then, it, it just gets way out of control and you just end up trapped and nobody will help you. Not all single mothers university. Some of my some of my um, members turn and go into business as single parents and they've got a nice, healthy pot of money behind them to do that. Um, so that's not always the problem, but it's often the problem. And then with business then, so as a consequence, because you want to work, you go into business and then it's just kind of how do you set up? And it can be simple things like what website do I set up? 
you know, you go on to um, any kind of forums and you look for work in school hours. What can I do? I want to work from home. I need to work in school hours. You're going to get 300 people inviting you to join their team. I'm very anti this. I'm very public about being anti this. I do have some members who do it. Um, I don't let them recruit, but I do try and support them in trying to sell what they sell to generate an income because I know how extremely difficult it is particularly to earn a full-time living and to sustain that. And it's something that I also ask the government to address. And I try and warn people again, if somebody tells you they're earning a full-time living, if you're telling people you're earning a full-time living, you have to understand that if you're struggling, the people underneath you will struggle as well. So we can't feed into this, um, you know, um, we cannot feed into this situation where we benefit from other people struggling. And, you know, if people um, are doing well, then don't be scared to ask them questions. How are you doing well? How long did it take you to earn full time income? How many people have you got working on your team to enable you to do that? How long did it take you to do that? You know, you've got to be very clever and, you, you know, lots of clever people get trapped into this. So you've got to be careful and you need to ask questions and you need to check that what's being sold to you is legitimate. Um, because often, you know, for an extra income, it's fine, but it's a full time income. You're very vulnerable when you want to work from home and be self-employed to falling into um, either six figure coaching programs, you know, come and pay me two thousand pounds and I'll teach you how to, to charge other people a thousand pounds and so on and so forth, et cetera, et cetera. It's very unethical and it's not the way we should be treating each other as human beings, particularly when you've been a single parent in adversity. You cannot do that to other people. Business is about finding what you're good at and it's learning how to generate an income from what you're good at. Um, now, I was at a job fair with the job centre um, 18 months ago and uh, I was exhibiting there and a lady came to see me. She was pushing a buggy. I think she had two children in the buggy and she was talking to everybody in that job sphere were asking her to work for them as carers you had some you had a couple of stands there where they were recruiting people to work for free and you had a couple of stands there who were recruiting care workers um, on a minimum wage okay it's a noble job it's a great job but I was talking to this lady she was a qualified yes yeah, she was a qualified carpenter she'd learnt carpentry do you know how much money you can earn in carpentry with the right confidence, with the right business skills, with your website, with your networking? She could earn in a single day what she could earn in a week working for one of these companies. But because she didn't have the confidence or the support behind her to do that, um, you know, she was kind of just being pushed. And because the job centre um, are still very uh, negative in their mindset towards people wanting to be self-employed because some people take advantage. Uh, they will push you to go and work in a low skilled, low paid job. Um, well, people still come in. Um, they will push you to go and work in one of those industries because they don't know how or they are not willing to support you properly in doing what you're very, very good at. And um, so, but, you know, there are so many things there. Um, I've got quite a few people in now, and I'm really conscious of the fact that I've said so much already in such a short space of time. A lot of people would have missed a lot. So can I just do another check now? Have we got any questions at the moment? Has anybody got any specific things they want to know or ask before I keep going off on a tangent, which I do? No, I just wanted to uh, say how in gen genuinely how inspirational you are. Like, I've sat on a lot of these, and... I sit there and I'm just like, oh, it's the same stuff. But your story is amazing. So, yeah, that's all I want to say at this point. Just keep talking. I'm loving everything you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Vicky. I, I do really appreciate it. Go, carry on, Nina. Um, I hear what you're saying, actually, in regards to... Um, so I lost my job unexpectedly last March, um, first week of lockdown. And long story short, it won't take too much time. I've done some life coaching, some career coaching. I've done a four months digital skills course. And it's all kind of driven by myself because I'm proactive like that. But ultimately, when I spoke to work coach, because I moved in November to Universal Credit, 
had never have never been on it before, but obviously needs must. I only got one month's pay. I was in my employer under two years, so it wasn't very much. Um, and clearly here as a single parent. Um, anyway, um, the work coaches have been great, but when I tried to explore a conversation about um, where you stand if you're going to set yourself up, because it's something that's been in the back of my mind the last few months, because I'm a, a PA by profession, I have about 20 years experience, PA, EA, and I know there's so many VAs out there, and I know there's always room for competition, etc. But ultimately, um, I kind of got the inclination that there's no support. So unless you had a redundancy payout, which I've had in the past, not recently, clearly from what I've just said, you know, then you've got that buffer to kind of think, well, actually, I can kind of give myself a chance to start. And that's why I was really intrigued, like touching on what you've said tonight. I've been there. I've had the 10 to 4 job, the perfect job, the perfect hours. But life happened and voluntary redundancy came up and it was shortly after being separated, pre-divorce. And I have kind of not really settled in a role, but it's just circumstances. Stuff happens to everyone. It, it's not through choice. I've kind of like you said, I've, I've kind of done the school hours. Um, I've done the part-time, uh, you know, the four days over five days or the three long days. Um, but my son's 15 now, so I feel like actually I want to work full time. I've just got to the point, like probably many people with teenagers, I just want to earn a decent wage. I, I'm fed up, part-time hours, no stability, and yeah, watch your money. <laughs> but, you know, there's so many things I take for that, and I really do appreciate the input because... I'm just going to try and shut the dog out, but this is how professional I am. I'm going to try and shut the dog out. Only two seconds. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to find a way. Oh. What it is to be human, hey? So um, I actually really value what you said there, Nina, because it's so important. There are so many things you said there that are crucial. And I think I really appreciated the feedback as well, because you never know when you do these things. If you're just going on on a tangent, everyone's going to be like, oh, my God, what's she doing? Anyway, so, Nina, um, there's so many things there. Um, VACT, V-A-C-T. So she specialises. She's got a group on Facebook for VAs, PAs, EAs. Um, and they all really support each other. Yes, there's a lot of them out there. But we're getting to a point as um, primary carers, as, you know, um, undervalued employees, as people who are sick of presenteeism, all of these things, we, we are walking away from the workforce at a very rapid rate. So, you know, there is always a need for a VA. Um, VAs charge more money, but of course, what VAX helps you with is to actually, and there's another one, Catherine, um, Catherine, how to be a VA, she wrote a book as well. Um, I can link to those two if you like, just okay. contact me separately, it's fine. Okay. Um, you can all do that, by the way. Um, so, the work coaches, so first things first, there are blogs on the Single Mums Business Network website, things like how to make peace with, you know, needing benefits. You've spent your whole life paying tax. You know, you really need to understand what's what you pay in and what you draw away. Over a lifetime, you pay between half a million and nine hundred thousand pounds, depending on your pay scale. You know, even if you're on benefits for like, you know, 10 years or something, you'll probably only have a portion of that. So you really need to understand you're not you're not the one that's kind of being um entitled to public money you're not going to spend your state you actually voluntarily from the moment you're born let the state take your money <laughs> you just give it to them you trust it to them and the politicians are like oh yeah yeah we'll take that oh we'll take that yeah we'll take that and we'll look after you if you need it one day so we never question that and it took me it took me a couple of years to get my head around that because i felt so ashamed of needing to be on benefits when I needed to be on them and you know and then I, I sat down and then I kind of it was only when I came off them that I started to really look at it and make peace with it and work out and I did homework into exactly you know how many benefits close that door how many benefits you know uh, you pay over a lifetime and how many you draw out and I did the maths and I thought you know what? I only had a tiny percentage of that and the only reason I needed that tiny percentage was because these barriers because I was charged too much in rent and I was paid too low you know because of these barriers so I thought okay this isn't my bad like this is their bad and we'll tell them that um so the work coach thing you know they are absolute nightmare because I, they don't mean to be because the the they think that people say they're self-employed to um, evade work. 
you know, they think it's just a fad and it's just an excuse so that you can kind of sit there and, and watch Netflix all day and, you know, so, and then just say, oh, you know, I don't, they don't, it's, it's very frustrating. This is where we've got to really educate them and help them see. And the only way by doing that is by succeeding and by really putting the effort in. I'm running a, a 12 week course now from March the 8th when the children are back at school. It's a 12 week accountability course. And it's to support people who have got to prove to their work coaches that they are putting in those hours. Because, you know, when I spoke to my work coach, they said, um, you know, I, I explained about business and everything else. They said, well, OK, so what are you doing to, to look for work then? I said, oh, hang on a minute. I said, I've just told you that I'm building a business. And he said, oh, yeah, but, you know, you need to, to look for work. So I said, hang on a minute. I said, this is where luckily I wouldn't have said this when I was in my 20s. That's the problem. I didn't have the confidence you know, my 30s, but then at this point I had the confidence. I said, hang on a minute, it's my understanding. I'm actually working on my business. And this is the problem. You don't see all the work underground. You only see the tip of the iceberg when money starts coming in. Okay, and I said, I am spending 16 to 20 hours a week or 25 hours a week or whatever it was that time working. I am working. I'm working extremely hard. But of course, it's going to take time for me to not only bring money into the business, but be in a position to draw money out of the business. So I stood my ground and gave him a little tinky telly off and said, don't be, how am I going to build a business if you're telling me to go and apply for 20 jobs a week or 30 jobs or 40 jobs a week? You can't do both, you know, but naturally, if you see it as a benefit, they're an accountability partner. If you, if you change your mindset and think, well, okay, they're not a work coach, they're an accountability partner. And I, I will go down and I will make a, a very structured, if you're in business, you shouldn't have a problem with doing a Word document or an Excel document, you know, if you can't figure out how to do that, then you need to go on a little course to learn how to do it. Um, you know, if you're in business, you should be able to keep an accurate record of what you've done for a few hours each day, you know, to say either I think, and that actually is even engaging, even building a website or researching accountants, that's all work. That's what people do in business. That's what the CEOs do. It's all work. You won't be earning money. You won't have paying clients. Joining back to, you know, Facebook group, joining the SMBN, engaging for an hour in networking, it's all work. And it's getting that message across to your work coach. And you've got to be really strong and confident with that. And then you actually need to make sure that you do it and you do fulfill that because otherwise you're dishonoring yourself. Because if you don't actually work on your business, then you will be in a position in 12 months time where you're not you're, you're back down the office in a minimum paid, low skilled, low paid work. So you absolutely got a very tiny window of which to get yourself out of that situation. And the only way to do that is to really understand that for six months, you really shouldn't expect to earn a penny. You have to make peace with struggling on universal credit or whatever funds you've got available to you. You have to make peace with struggling because you are really, really, really lucky if within 12 months you're drawing out a full time wage. So this is another argument I have with government. The minimum income floor is too short. 12 months actually isn't that long. You know, I've been networking with women and men in business for several years now, and most of them will say it takes a couple of years to build a business. If you're in a if you're in a marriage and your spouse is supporting you financially, nobody is putting you into pressure to draw a full time wage out of your business within 12 months. If you're a single parent, you're in receipt of help, then you are under immense pressure to draw that money out within. Otherwise, you lose your you lose your livelihood. You can't feed your child. You're down the food bank because they take money off you before you had a chance to earn it back. So it is a race against time. And that's why I call us the real life Cinderella's. We are racing before that clock ticks 12. You know, if a clock ticks 12, your slipper falls off, you know, you're going to get blisters. That's 21st century peasantry for you. We shouldn't be 21st century peasants because we're primary carers and we're trying to work in sync with school or childcare. I get really passionate about it. Excuse me. Calm myself down. So, um, so, you know, but at the moment, the pressure's there with the minimum income floor. You need to draw right money within 12 months. So you've got a service to yourself to work. It's work. You sit down at your computer and this is what you do. This is me. This is what I do. This is me. This is what I do. You tell people on LinkedIn. You tell people on WordPress. Not a cheap website that isn't going to get you seen on Google because a cheap website won't talk to Google. You need 
you need one that talks to Google, SEO, you know, SEO training. If you, and again, there are barriers to affordability to what training is available. So this is where I try and help my members to where I can, et cetera, et cetera. So, so there are barriers to leafleting as a VA, you know, networking is crucial if you're a VA because people buy from people. You know, you if you if you're on LinkedIn as a VA, you're on LinkedIn with another 10 yeah. people, you know, or another 20 VAs. You've got to be physically networking. You've got Sterling, quite expensive. You've got the FSB, not so expensive, but still expensive. You need to find a way to do it. The Chamber of Commerce, you know, again, it's about affordability. And I, I went through all of these different avenues for years. I couldn't afford to join the FSB, the Chamber. I had to talk them into letting me pay monthly instead of paying annually. Um, uh, the Sterling Networks, I went to a couple of free ones, but that's not actually good ethics. You shouldn't do that too much. Lots of people will say, just keep going to all the different meetings in different areas and for free. Well, that, that won't work. It's not, it's unethical. They'll pick up on it. They won't want to support you because you're doing that. And you, it, you know, have you heard the rule if you've got to see six times before you buy it? Magazine salespeople and marketing will tell you, you put an ad in, you know, six times on a trot and then people will see you enough times to buy it. It's similar with networking. You're going, you're building up relationships and all of a sudden, Sally is going to say to Bob, when Bob says, oh, I need some help with my admin, Sally's going to say, oh, Bob, I know Nina. I have been networking with her. She'd be perfect. You know, this is how, this is how you get business when you're self-employed. You make sure people know you want to first, you make sure you're the person who comes to people's mind first. Um, you know, whatever it is you do, it doesn't matter what you do, whether you're a dog walker or a cleaner or a PA or a, or a hairdresser or a mechanic or a, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, but whatever you do, make sure everybody knows what you do. Make sure everybody knows who you are and what you do, you know, and, and if you're not sure what to do, just be careful not to get stung by people who will tell you to go and work for them for free. Because believe you me, that's a really hard thing to get into and it's a really hard thing to get out of. Any more questions? No, thank you. Then you're being shy, you can type it if you want. Okay? Type it privately to me if anybody's got a question, they don't want to ask out loud. I guess for me, J J Jules, I just want to sort of add on just to what you're saying there, is I think that, I mean, <laughs> I know it's not the best, it's the best space for a, a man to be giving his, his perception on this, but for me, for all, all the women that I've worked with and the women that I currently work with within my business, I think that, like you were saying, you've got to make sure that people know who you are and expect to come across bias because unconscious and conscious bias is there. It's not going away. It's, excuse my language, shit, but it, it exists. And I think that's such an important message you've just put across that you have to make sure that people know who you are because... By doing that, that is the only way you are going to change that bias. Bias only changes through education. Education comes from you. Um, so, that, yeah, it's just a really, really strong message to put across there. And I think that, if anything, that's the, one of the best things to take away from what you're saying is, is make sure people know who you are. I've just had a look at your LinkedIn and straight away it's like, oh, right. that's Julie. <laughs> that's really cool. So Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, to, if you was in a classroom, I'd make you go and sit in the corner for looking at LinkedIn while I'm talking. <laughs> but, <you> know, like, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, you know, it's really important. It, funny enough, on LinkedIn, you know, I mean, I've got people who've been in my network for a couple of years, and ev every so often I'll do a post and I say, you know, for my new connection, this is me and this is what I do. And even last week, somebody connected, somebody said to me, she said, Julie, I've been for ages, and I didn't even know you did some of that stuff. Because, um, again, what somebody said to me once was, You've got to imagine that you're whispering in a disco because that's what you're doing. You're whispering in disco. You think that you think that you say something that everybody knows or everybody hears you, and they don't. You know, you are whispering in a disco. So you've got to, you know, really raise your vibration, and you need to make sure that you're letting people see who you are and what you do. And you've got to be prepared to repeat that message hour after hour, day after day, week after week, month after month. You know, and then. You know, if in six months you haven't got one paying client and you need to think, crap, am I doing something wrong here? Maybe I need a little bit of mentoring or something. 
Um, but joining networks is crucially important. Building relationships is crucially important. Obviously, I'm biased. I run one, but I run one for a reason because I know it works. I know how important it is. Um, you know, because it's the only way that I kind of turn a corner with confidence, with um, support, with information, with advice. You know, doing this on your own is a long, painful journey. And it's having people to have your back as well. And family, I mean, family are the worst. You know, they're the best people in the world. They love you more than anything, but they are the ones who can say, oh, just get a proper job, you know, or what's wrong with you? Or, or why can't you just do this? Or, you know, they really don't understand some of the challenges that you'll face. Or, oh, this is business, this day agent's job. You can do that. You know, it's only one Saturday a month. It's like, well, who's going to have my child on Saturday a month? <laughs> it's so, so you need to network around like-minded people who really understand what's going on with you in your journey. Um, but I completely don't, what I don't want to do, I don't want to be too personal, but if you are prepared to divulge what it is that you do, I would be really interested to, to pull that apart. And I, particularly because you said about what you do, would you be prepared to share what your business is or not? You don't have to. I can share what it was. Um, <laughs> when? Yeah, so I used to um, own an events company in a swim school. Um, both were successful, but for me... Um, Balancing that with being, at the time, freshly broken up from my ex-wife and the single parent um, was just too much. I had to put family first. Um, it's something that I do want to revisit. It's something that I want to go back to. At the moment, I currently work for O2. Um, I'm a store manager, but I also work um, on allyship programs within the business and uh, health and well-being within retail. So I sort of have side projects there. Um, that's why I was really keen to come onto this because I think stuff like this is super, super important. Um, and there's not enough networks. There are a lot of networks like this, but there are not a lot, a lot of networks that have this much passion. That's what I will say yeah. on that. Um, and yeah, so, uh, so I mean, for me, I had the swim school uh, at, at the highest point I had in excess of 720 children on the program. The events company I was running in excess of 21 events a year um, was going really, really well, but I didn't have a support network. It was just me. When my relationship broke down, I just I just couldn't sustain it anymore. Financially, it would have been fine, but emotionally, I couldn't sustain it. It was already having a serious impact upon mental health anyway. Um, so I had to take the decision. I didn't sell. I just closed everything down, so I didn't make any money off of it, um, which would have been nice. But I just made the decision, look, I, I know I want to revisit this or something like this a later date. So I don't want to sell it because I put so much time and effort into learning how to brand and create branding myself. Um, but yeah, that's sort of me in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny, it's, it's just so important what you said there. Obviously, I'm picking up particularly on the support network side of it. Um, and, it and it is really difficult for men as well because, um, you know, it's, it's harder, it's, it's only just getting better with that, where, where men are openly talking about their own mental well being and how important that is. Um, are you familiar with Michael Ray, Charlie's dad? Uh, say that again. Michael Ray, Charlie's dad. Michael Ray, no. Yeah, Google Michael Ray, Charlie's dad, or connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll connect you with him, do an introduction. Um, single dad, I, you know, he's so good at talking about it. so many things that I think you two would bounce off each other absolutely brilliantly. And, um, oh, there's a chat here. Hang on, let me see. I told you I'm no good at chat and um, video at the same time. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, so I've had a message to say I want advice in actually transitioning from the part-time job to my own business. I'm motivated to get myself sorted and I am also very scared in taking the leap financially. Yes, it's scary and it's painful. Um, and that is why um, <laughs> I... You know, I realise well, you can you can message me directly. That's no problem. But obviously, I don't know much about the part time job. If the if the part time job is working, um, as in in school hours and around childcare, and it's not making you miserable, I would try and hang on to it and build the business alongside it. Um, but if it's making you depressed on a Sunday night, Monday, then then take that leap because at the end of the day. I mean, I find being all in with business does help you focus properly. And also, it's your mindset and your confidence. When you are an employee, 
um, you're spoken to a certain way, you're treated a certain way. It doesn't do your confidence any good. It doesn't do your ego any good. Okay, this isn't all about being egotistic, but actually ego is quite important in business. For you to stand up and say, you know, I'm a business person, I'm good at this, this is what I do. Um, because we're single parents, most of us should be entitled to some financial support you know, for a period of time. Um, I don't know what age that is now. I think it's 18. Is it with children? It depends. It's, I think it used to be 16 years ago. I think it's 18. I actually don't know that. Um, I'm sure one of you will be able to tell me privately or, or I, I need to check that actually. Um, but at this stage, if you're a primary carer, you should be able to get some support. Now, what we do know is that support isn't adequate to live comfortably. So we do know that that support is going to be excruciatingly painful. Um, you know, I've been there and this is why I do what I do. Um, it's, it's making sacrifices and it's being prepared to make sacrifices. You are sacrificing any privileges, you're sacrificing any holidays, you're sacrificing any cinema visits, you're sacrificing any takeaways. You don't spend money on a Chinese takeaway, you spend £20 on a Facebook campaign. You know, and this is where you need to absolutely take responsibility for ensuring that that pain is short term. It is scary, there's no quick fix. Um, you know, <laughs> It's, it's another reason why I try and help my members by the Single Mums Business Network. Like I said, there was a charge to it. It's not free because it's business. It's not charity. Um, it's only £2.50 per week. So anybody can afford that. And if you say you can't afford that, then you need to really ask yourself how serious you are about being committed to your business. Because, you know, one, one other thing I find when I was setting up in business, um, I, I think... You know, particularly with family, if I remember rightly, I would be skint, but I would spend £60 on a piece of material when I needed to create my first key bed. And my mum was a bit, you know, miffed with that. She was like, well, you know, how can you call yourself a businesswoman and spend £60 on a piece of material when, you know, da 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 da. And I was like, well, that's the only way I'm going to make it. But yet, for my, well, none of you know me, so I can say this, for my sister, she was much happier for my sister to be as skint, but spend £60 on a bottle of wine, a takeout, gamble on the lottery, only £5 a week, but £5 a week and a bottle of wine, and maybe a, a movie on Netflix, that adds up to more. If you put all of that money, if you sacrifice those things, the short-term pain, long-term gain, take it seriously, be committed, take the leap, put every penny you've got outside of your bills, and I say bills, even then I mean essential bills, you know, this is where you really swallow your pride. My creditors had to, you know, no credit cards were getting £50 or £100. They were getting £1. £1. They stopped the credit. They stopped the interest. They stopped the charges. You know, I held my head up high. I wasn't, I wasn't not paying them. I had every intention of paying them. But I said, Do you know what? Right now, I need that money to survive. And I need that money to turn my life around. I don't have disposable income. And if I do have £10 disposable income in a week... If I've got a choice between getting, you know, a chocolate bar and a bottle of wine or running a Facebook campaign, then what am I going to do? Facebook campaign, you know, or a little course or a £10 webinar or something like that. It's investing in what's good for you. It's investing in what's going to change your life for the better. It's taking responsibility. It's not expecting anybody else to bail you out. And it's knowing that it is hell and it is miserable, you know, being on you. But that's why we fight to get out of it. And that's why we fight to be self-employed rather than working in a job that's beneath your skill set and beneath your salary scale because, you know, you're going to permanently struggle if you do that. So you do fight. You grind your teeth. You kick and scream. You wade through mud. You cry at night, you know, and you just fight and fight and fight and fight so that you know that you're going to change things and you're going to be in a position where you're earning nobody should you know, it shouldn't be that difficult for anybody to earn £100 a day. You know, I've, I've said before, I've blogged about these things. With the way inflation, um, yes, of course, yeah, it's brilliant. With the way inflation's gone at, um, everybody should be earning £100 a day at least. It shouldn't be that hard. In five hours, it shouldn't be that hard to earn £100, a, you know, two grand a month. You should be able to spend money on your rent and bills and have a disposable income. Why shouldn't you be able to afford that on a single income household? You know, one income should be enough to cover one cost of living and have disposable income. Work doesn't often allow you to do that because employers still pay a very offensive wage. 
I'm talking to the government about that. They're not listening much, but I keep talking to them about it and they're going to listen. I'm going to, you know, chain myself to the fence at some point soon. Anyway, um, Liz is going to say something, which is brilliant because I'm getting jaw ache. And then the higher is. So uh, Liz messaged me already. So Liz, you share. Then the higher you share. And then I'll come back, OK? Hi. <laughs> Lovely to see you here, Jules. I'm Thanks, really Liz. enjoying um, tonight's discussion. So I don't know. Not a lot of people know me. So I'm Lydia. I run a business called Holistic Fitness and Coaching. And, I, and Jules doesn't know that I'm going to share and what I'm going to share. <laughs> I'm actually um, a member of the Single Moms Business Network, and, <gasps> and I'm the <laughs> and I'm actually the Surrey County Coordinator. And Jules did not know this is no sales pitch, so don't worry. <laughs> I'm just sharing like from my heart, and um, I just wanted to share that I found the Single Moms Business Network tribe, as I call it. When was it? Probably about like two years ago already. I think it was. Yeah. So. How weird is this? A friend that is not a single mom told me about Jules because she happened to see her somewhere on social media. And I had a call with Jules the one day. Um, and it was just so amazing because it was almost like um, we shared the same passion in terms of like single moms, like empowerment and like what we want to get across about being a single mom being a single parent and not having like the stigma about like we can't achieve things and we've always got to be like the lesser and you know we can't have our own businesses and stuff and I just I literally just fell in love with um single moms business network and like the whole the whole um you know the whole vision the whole mission the whole concept around what Jules started and you know I didn't hesitate or think twice to join because and I promise you this is not a sales pitch <laughs> well, I'm probably doing it very well but um yeah it's it's just it's just such a nice um like I call it like a tribe um it's just such a nice thing to be part of because it's actually you know for once I felt like I was part of a, a single parent si single mom's group where we weren't like sort of the, it wasn't like the victim mentality and like, you know, you can't achieve anything. Like you have to be poor. You can't. So it's almost like that fighting spirit. And that's sort of like what I've got inside of me. And it was just nice to have a tribe that I knew I could connect with and someone that actually gets that you want to grow your business and you want to actually become someone because actually all single moms or single parents deserve like a triple medal, to be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So yeah, I just wanted to share and like literally I love being part of the Single Moms Business Network like that I'm the county coordinator for Surrey and yeah, and I'm, I'm so glad to be listening to you tonight, Jules. <laughs> Thanks, Lydia. No, I, I promise I didn't pay it. <laughs> you <laughs> didn't. This is on um, the back of my decision. <laughs> it's so important I, and I think we, that, you know, that is important because this is the thing. This is what I really wanted when I started out. I was so lonely you know, as a single woman in business. And I really did feel like I was the only person on the planet fighting so hard to generate an income. That I, I just didn't see anybody else out there, you know, who was who was doing that same thing. I just saw lots of, like you said, woe is me victim mindset. And I didn't want to join that. I wanted to say, look, you know, come on, let's crack on and get stuff. Anyway, so mission accomplished, I think. Nahaya, I know he's going to say something. Hello, it's not another SMBN sales pitch, I promise. <laughs> um, what, well, one of my questions would be, and sort of looking at it, um, I'm sort of a year in now, as you know, you know me, and some of you don't, but I've been a single mum in business for a year. Um, and something I went through, the same thing with the work coaches, the job centre, you need to do this, you need to do that, um, pulling me different ways. Um, I mean, I came from, I was in a 35 grand job, um, managing children's homes, um, quite high up, good career, marriage fell apart, wouldn't give me any flexible time. And suddenly, you know, it was scrabbling to get an 18 grand job that fitted around things. Um, so I know then when I decided to be self-employed, um, one of the biggest things was, okay, I know my skill. It's then how do I start that as a business? What do I need to know? And even in the last year I've done different marketing courses, different, um, looking at different, you know, like you said, Facebook campaigns, learning Facebook, learning social media. Um, so for someone, you know, I'm in a all right place now, but for someone that is in that starting point, what would be the, what would be the best tip or best bit of advice that you could give someone? Because 
I know it's it is so many different people get involved and the same the only people that I had around me that were self-employed were family all the men you know that tilers carpenters all those fields but no I don't know any women around me that are self-employed that are business owners you know they all work in schools or they all work in you know those sort of environments because that is where you know generally they have been led as well for work so to fit in around childcare. um so yeah what would be your big tip for someone that is at that starting point of you know what should they focus on first well first of all you need to focus you need to be really clear on who you are and what you're doing because you can't convey that message unless you know what it is so you need to be really clear on what your offering is um, and what you want to do and what you want to spend your time doing. And then you need to, you know, we've got every, all the information we need at our fingertips. You know, when I designed and patented and protected the keypad and, and got that, I had no idea about any of that stuff. Google will tell you everything you need to know. You know, you've got to be proactive. So anything that comes to your head, ask Google and Google will tell you. Don't ask Bing, Bing is <laughs> right? Ask Google. <laughs> Sorry, Bing sponsors. But it really upsets me every time. So, so you know, first of all, you've got to be proactive. You know, you are in business. It is a job. It's not a case of put your website up there and expect people to come by for you. It's a job. It's a full-time job. You know, even if you're declaring you're working 16, 20 hours a week, the likelihood is going to be up. You'll be working every day and every night. You know, the truth of it is, is you, you live and breathe it. And, and if you hate it, then you need to think about what else you can be doing. Secondly is... Um, your mindset is so, so important. We do, we are what we eat. And that's not in the physical sense, that's in the mental sense. You know, only you can stop you. I am the master of my fate. I will control my destiny. You know, I take responsibility. I will decide my future. You know, you know people will always, always say, oh, you know, just get a job. Or people will tell you to take the easy route. If you want to be... If you want to be something other than that, if you don't want to be an employee where somebody tells you you can never earn more than 12 pounds an hour, then you've got to make that change yourself. And the repetitive, you know, if anybody's done NLP or psychology or hypnotherapy or anything like that, the power of the mind, it is so, so powerful. And it's really important that you recondition your brain every day. I've got them all over my wall. This, this one here, I mean, it's... Um, it, you know, I'm confident now, but I make sure that that is what I see every day when I come into the office. You know, only a week of that. You need to constantly feed your brain what you need your brain to think. Um, at the same time, practice self-love and compassion, because you know what? There are going to be days where it's hard. And, there, you know, mental health is so important. And, and there are going to be days where you just need to switch it off. Netflix, duvet. Just have a couple of days, go for a forest shower, whatever it is you need to do. You know, if you're scrolling, uh, scrolling, don't scroll for Christ's sakes. If you see what everybody else is doing, especially family and friends or perfect 2.4s or luxurious holidays, especially when you're skimping and saving and you're doing the hard time. You know what I said earlier about, you know, you know, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime, whatever, you, you, you need to... You need to go through the pain, you need to sacrifice those things. And whilst you're sacrificing those things, if you watch other people doing those things, it's going to be toxic for your well-being. So feed yourself what you know is going to be good for you and not what is going to be bad for you. And then the networking thing, it is so important, okay? It is, you've got to shake off the imposter syndrome. You've got to shake off this, I am just me. I am just me, little girl, little boy, whatever you feel like. You need to stand up in the room because actually every person in business is just me. It's just a person. They are standing there. You know, you've got the CEO of the company saying, you know, oh, I, I supply high-end lubricant oils to Bentley Motors. He's no different to you. You know, and you're standing up and you're saying, you know, I make lovely handcrafted baby, baby clothes. Every single business has a market. So with confidence, stand up and say what it is you do. Just, but just, just stand up. Just don't be scared of, like, what's the worst thing that can happen? Somebody's going to tear you down. You go to a networking meeting and everyone's going to say, who are you? You don't look like a business person. 
you know, that's, this is what we imagine in our heads. And you really need to get over that. And actually, you realise that the business world is a lot less toxic than the employment world. It's not dog eat dog. It's not like I want to stand on your head so that I get that permission before you. These are all people who have done it. They've been through the journey. They want to support you. They want to uplift you. They want to answer your questions. They want to help advise you on what the best website is to use. They want to help you by linking up with you on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter and then doing the odd retweet. Or we actually really, really want to support each other. We like helping each other and advising each other and reach out to other single parents in business. And don't be too ashamed if there's this transition from benefits to to self-employed income it's like do you know what this is this isn't a situation you've put yourself in this is a situation society has put you in all that old white pale male gray or whatever you call white pale male gray suits all these people who have never experienced being a primary carer who are like oh good to nice five you know you know good for us we set a precedent for our workforce and upset you know it's that's that's not that's no longer accepted in the 21st century it's no longer acceptable you know, we've got the technology and we've got the mindsets and we've got the skills and everything else. Um, so that was one bit of advice that turned into three bits of advice. Networking, don't try and do it on your own. Do not try and do it on your own because you will have bad days. And when you've got bad days, you need people around you who are going to lift you up and reassure you and encourage you or answer painful questions. Um, you know, and you might have good family around you, but they might not be the right people to answer your specific questions or or support you in business because they love you and because they can see how hard it is and they can see how hard you're trying they'll probably say look you tried your best you know you've tried your best go on to Tesco come on now we got your back you know we love you it's not the kind of support you need if you're going to make the change that you want to make so have the right network around you feed your own brain good stuff not toxic stuff if you're feeling jealous and envious of things you're seeing of other people, just switch off a couple of days. Give yourself a cold shower and feel happy for them. Do you know what? They've obviously been through this already. You know, you know, uh, my time will come. Or I can don't be scared of people. I'm, I'm in, can you, on LinkedIn, I connect with people, you know, if they've got an MBE after their name or they or people, they've got three guys and connections and you can only follow them, I connect with them. Like, no, I'll have a bit of you. Yes, I'm good enough for you. Thanks so much. Whereas the old me, a few years ago, when I sat down, I was like, I wouldn't dare reach out to them. I wouldn't dare connect with them. I wouldn't dare, you know, because I really felt like there was this hierarchy of person. There is no hierarchy of person. We are all born and we all die and we all, you know, snore at night. Well, I don't, but, you know... <laughs> It's so, you know, so just put yourself on the same level as everybody else and don't feel like you as much, why shouldn't you do well? Or why shouldn't you work hard? But make sacrifice. Don't expect anybody to do it for you. Nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody is going to do it for you unless you're paying them something to do it for you, you know, or you're doing it together. So anyway, I've gone off on a tangent again. Any last questions? Because I want to stick to the hour because it is meant to be an hour and I could talk all night, but we can do it again, time if anybody wants to do it again. It's not a problem. Next month or something, we'll see. Um, or obviously, you can all join the Single Most Business Network. Tomorrow, I've got an intro meeting, um, which is on the Single Most Business Network website or the Single Most Business Network Facebook page or Twitter or whatever. I'm on pretty much every channel. Um, I'm rubbish at Instagram, but Nahaya and Liz are good on Instagram. Um, there's loads... You know, just there's loads out there. There's loads of information out there. I'm doing 12 week, the 12 week course from the 8th of March, um, accountability growth and, and stuff like that to really tackle all of these issues from budgeting to website to PR to this and everything else. I'm not selling it here, but I'm letting you know it's this is part of the confidence with doing your own business. It's getting that mindset shift from sales to actually just letting people know what's available to them. You know, it's giving information. You're not, you're not, you're not begging people to to do stuff. You're saying, look, this is there. If you want to take it, if you don't, don't. But if they don't know, if they don't know you exist, if they don't know what you're offering, how are they going to sign up to you? All right. So anyway, any questions before we rock and roll? What's your website? Single Mums Business Network. Um, I always Google it. 
I always encourage you to Google it because the more people Google it, the more Google likes me. That's why I'm not giving you the HTTPS address. You'll see on all my posts, I don't give you HTTPS. I say Google SMBN and find me. <laughs> I'm on the first 10 pages. <laughs> Tops to Google. I'm the first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, just put SMBN or single members business. I should come out. We, we pretty much dominate the first two pages, Lovely. which is good because I know what I'm doing with SEO, which is good. Um, Tam, if you want to close it up with your with your hostess with the most best thing, that would be brilliant. No, it's amazing. Thank you so much, Jules. That was brilliant.